Hi guys, I'm back. All right, and I managed to get Ryan to go back to sleep. So quick, 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 make the cards, make the cards, get it done. <laughs> we'll see if I can quickly get those cards finished before he wakes up again. He is just a grumpy bum today. Up and away, next one. Swirly, swirly, where are they? All right. Oh, what about? my stitch shape. Oh, there we are. Oh yay. We'll do we'll stamp the little the little boats and then I'll cut them out with one of the stitch shapes and we can just pop it up on top. That'll look really cute. Okay. It saves us from fussy cutting. Fussy cutting always takes forever. Okay, so I have cut some more of the blueberry bushel. Oh, you know what I should do? I should cut this at 14.85 uh, and then... And it's the same width as the white layer. And I don't need to trim any off. <laughs> Look at that. Look at me go. Can it fit? Can it fit that way? Get it all lined up nice and straight. Alrighty. Let's do this. Ah! So I'm rushing to see. I'm rushing to see that I can get it done before Ryan wakes up again. <laughs> yeah. such a cute little sort of wavy element, isn't it? Get all those little bits out. It's my dye brush. I don't know. I don't know. My desk is a mess at the moment. It's not usually too bad. But, because I've been away at stamp camp, which was amazing, by the way, and you should totally come to the next one. But, um, stamp camp is awesome, and then you get home and I've, well, I've just got all of this stuff, because, you know, I take so much with me. And so, um, then I've got to, like, find everything at home again when I get back. There we go. Okay. Two little wavy bits. Beautiful, beautiful little wavy bits. Put those scissors back. Okay. down there. Pop that away.
Alrighty. So now we've got two little wavy bits and we need two little boats. So what colour are we going to make our little boat? I keep thinking I can hear Ryan, but I'm not sure if it's just the TV or not. <laughs> I'm getting all paranoid now, waiting for him to wake up again. My stamping scrub ready to go. Alrighty, two little boats, hey? I'm going to make a small change instead of using lovely lipstick I'm gonna use real red oh are we gonna I said that we were going to do these in embossing didn't I all right Let's do embossing powders instead because that'll make the little boat just pop and it'll be super cute. I might actually, I know I'm making this slightly harder for myself because you know, why not? But I'm going to die cut my stitched circles first and then heat emboss on them. Because sometimes when you run it through the embossing, uh, through the, what's going to be, is that one going to be big enough? I don't know if that's going to be big enough. Sometimes when you run it through the um, embossing first and then, then run it through the uh, big shot afterwards it can crush the heat embossing a little bit and because I want these to be all heat embossed it's gonna be a pretty tight fit I reckon it'll work though I'm gonna have to stamp them right at the edges Yeah, so I don't want my heat embossing to get crushed, so I will do these first. <laughs> That's why I can't find the other one. So, the trick to this is to just use something to um, hold it with when you're heat embossing it so that you don't burn your fingers. So I'm going to do the little base of the boat first. And I'm going to make sure that I put the base of the boat 
pretty far down because I think those sails are just going to fit. Uh, so I might do a green base of the boat. And I keep my heat embossed powders in takeaway containers. I'm just going to move that one out of the way. Now another little trick. If you have some little bits that are sort of stuck on there, use a makeup brush. So this is one I keep on my craft desk just for heat embossing. Okay, I think we'll do yellow and orange for the, for the sale, so pineapple and grapefruit. Use this small one again. Put this guy away. Okay. Could be a cloud gone across the sky there. It's gone dark all of a sudden.
Uh, sorry if I'm missing any comments, guys. The camera is just above my eye level. The camera is just above my eye level, so I can't actually see <laughs> what I'm missing. <laughs> oh, hang on, I need, I need that one still. Then we need the other little sail. This cute little sail. With the stripes on it. Grapefruit Grove. So I could have done this a bit further up, couldn't I? just because these ones haven't been filling in as well I reckon it might be my Versamark is a bit dried up That's better. I'll have to put some more ink on my Versamark. Oh, and then there's that cute little flag. Do the cute little flag as well. There's that little a block put him on there mm, maybe the flag won't fit I'll have to see okay let's get these done This is the one that it didn't stick too well, so hopefully it doesn't all just blow off. I might do... Just the lower heat setting, just so that I don't blow all the Versamark away. I mean all the heat embossing powder. It, it didn't stick too well. That's so cute. Alright, so I'm going to try and stick this tiny little flag on and I might do blueberry bush, blueberry bush all for the little flag.
I'm really glad, even though it was fidgety doing it this way around, cutting it first and then doing the heat embossing, I'm glad that I have because this is really cute and I would hate for it to be all squished in the um, big shot as it goes through. to have a closer look there. Alrighty. Let's hang up the heat tool and put this stuff away. Every bushel. Alrighty. thinking maybe to use this the splash I don't know whether to use this oh, I suppose I can't now because I've already put the um the clouds on there I was thinking for a sun in the background but that'll be too hard okay so let's just Get rid of the excess. Oh, these are so cute. Look at that. How cute is that? So. Now you can put um, like some tear and tape or the adhesive sheet on the back before you die cut these little delicate pieces. But you can see I'm not actually using very much Tombow anyway. It, they actually stick pretty, pretty easily and the Tombow That should be the same width as the white. Yes. Just about. It's on an angle. And the good thing about the Tombow as well is you can move it around. You just get it in the right in the right position. Oh how cute is that? <gasps> Stop it. <laughs> okay. Couple of dimensionals. So cute, I can't get over it. It's adorable. Isn't that just the sweetest? Oh, hang on, I'm getting low battery. Better plug in before I 
There's you guys. Hold on. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Thank you. I've seen a couple of your comments there now that I'm looking up. Hi, Emery. Hi, Leone. Hi, welcome back, Carol. Thanks for sharing again. Hi, Liza. Sarah. Rebecca. Sue. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for watching. It is adorable, isn't it? Look at that. So cute. Such a good little boy card. And you know what? My brother has got an obsession with like yachts and things like that. So he is going to really love getting his version of this card as well. So, and you know, half the, half the time for making cards is actually coming up with the design. So, um, you know, I usually try and make a couple of them at least. You come up with something, then don't be shy. I don't think that every single card needs to be unique. Because, I mean, even, even these are. Even these are slightly different. And, you know, this was one of those sets that I bought. I bought it when it first came out as a bundle. And it was one of those sets that just sat there forever and I didn't use it. But you know what? I've made cards I've made a card for my father in law as well using this set. And just being able to make those little boats, you know, it it's hard. There aren't as many masculine things in the catalogue as the flowery stuff and the pretty stuff and, you know, I suppose we do tend to make cards for our girlfriends um, rather than the men in our lives because, you know, girls appreciate this sort of thing more. But you still need a few options, don't you, when the, you've got a... A birthday coming up or you know an anniversary or something like that you still want to have a couple of options I'll give you guys a sneak peek as well would you like to see oh thank you Linda <laughs> um, would you guys like to see oh look I've gone and stuck that on upside down <laughs> um, the Valentine's card that I'm gonna give my husband Hush Hush and um, this was actually one of the cards that we made at Stamp Camp. Let me dig it out for you. How cute is that? It's using the um, classic garage, geared up garage and the embossing mats and it's sort of, it's a version of what I made for uh, the presentation on stage. I was lucky enough to be asked to present on the classic garage suite at on stage. But yes, so that's that's from the uh, designer series paper and I've just fussy cut it. Used some staples for the ribbon just to, you know, manly man it up a little bit. And I've scrunched all the edges of the of the cardstock and then stamped the oil all over and well, I, found, I ran it through the embossing folders after I scrunched it and then stamped it all over. And that way you get that, um, you know, the marking because the ink doesn't go down into the little grooves. So it makes the gears pop off a little bit more. But that'll be coming up on my blog um, soon enough. I don't know when, I don't know the date, but that'll be coming up soon. And I've got a whole bunch of um, uh, videos coming up on my YouTube. Half of them are already live, um, and I'm getting around to the other half. <laughs> so I've got to work on that, get those finished. 
but I'm putting all the videos up live now and then the blog posts will be scheduled to come out over the next couple of weeks um, because the girls at Stamp Camp wanted to have access to all of the videos so um, I'm just putting those all up live now and then the blog posts will follow to coordinate with those but you know you don't necessarily need the blog post to enjoy the video do you <laughs> so I might just leave that at that um, oh I was going to do one of these wasn't I Time to put out this tiny fire while we sing you a song. That's hilarious. I do like this one. I actually just bought it because I love this banner. <laughs> so. I might just do a little, this little banner here. With the happy birthday in it. I think that'll work. Hmm. See if we can fit them both on here. Uh, and I might do what colour ribbon? You know what we could do? We could heat emboss it. <laughs> Why just stamp it when you can heat emboss it? Should we do it on blue? Let's do it on blue because I've got the scrap here anyway. Okay, so yellow. Uh, where is it? Grapefruit and pineapple. I'm going to go for. And, 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 just to ink these, oh there it is, sorry guys, I know I'm bumping you, I'll just ink this up a bit more, So I actually have a phone folder that I keep just for fixing up my inks. I always manage to squirt some off the side. Hmm. <laughs> So I just squirted all of that Versamark on top and I do the same way for my ink pads. Just squirt it all on and then use the bone folder to even it out and that way you don't need to worry about it being splotchy. And of course I keep one just for the inks and I have a clean one that I use for doing my cards. Well it's not really clean, it's got glue all over it but you know, you get the picture. <laughs> okay. Versamark, because we want this to be super clean. Versamark is anti-static powder. So it means that the powder, the heat powder, the heat emboss powder, will only stick to the Versamark and not all over the rest of your cardstock. And I'm going to put this on my, um, what's it called? The mat? Stamping Pierce mat. Just to make sure that it stands nice and even. Mm, might do. Oh, grapefruit.
Sharky. Just let that cool down a little bit and then we will go and I'm going to say happy birthday. Excuse my head, guys. Might pop into the should have um bent that up a little bit, shouldn't I? See if that fits better. Much the same. Okay. When you're doing different colours like this, you do need to be very careful that you don't overheat the first colour that you put down. So just make sure that you are just doing it enough to um, to melt it and not not any extra. Now, fussy cutting on camera. Hmm. Now, I am no pro at fussy cutting, but one trick is to do really long strokes with the scissors. You can see I'm starting with the scissors quite wide and just doing a really long uh, cut instead of like, you know, cutting like that. You're just doing one really long cut and you move the paper around rather than the scissors and of course you need to have really sharp scissors these stamping up scissors the snips are really good because they the point, the blade actually runs all the way down to the point, so you can get a really tiny little cut into a little corner with them. Um, they are also super sharp, and I've cut my fingers with them many, many times, so just be really careful when you're using them. <laughs> Okay. 
and I hope, I don't even know if you guys are able to see this. Oh, yes, I did. Thank you, Lisa. He went back to sleep. So he's just really grumpy at the moment. He's had a bit of a chest cough. Um, so he just sounds a bit, you know, wheezy. Um, but he's also getting his last set of molars through. And he has really struggled with all of his teeth. My other son, my oldest son, Luke. Um, he just popped through teeth. You'd be like, wow. When he smiled, you know. Has he got some new teeth? He looks like he's got some new teeth. And <laughs> his first... So when he was six months old and he got his first teeth through, he got six teeth in that month. Um, and he's just sort of been like that, you know, he's just always popped them through and they didn't really give him much trouble. The last set of molars did a little bit, woke him up at night and stuff. Um, but all of his other teeth just came through without much, much trouble at all. Ryan has let you know in, well in advance, that every single tooth is coming through. And they have come through so slowly that it has been um, just like one after the other. As soon as one comes through, the, the, the next one starts moving. And the poor little thing, he's, he's really had a tough time with his teeth. Alrighty, so I'm kind of thinking like here. What do you guys reckon? I like the idea of it just sort of being down in the corner there. I did it up there last time, but I think the blue is too heavy in the sky. Don't really like it there. I think I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to... wrong ones. Where did I put them? Here they are. <laughs> it's okay, I found them, don't worry. Pop one there. And pop one there. And I'm going to pop... Oh, I don't know if it's too much. Yeah, I think it will fit. I'm going to pop another one just there. Because the other bit is going to be on top of here. So it's going to get a bit of support. And I just feel like that bit's going to sag. So... A bit uneven with the dimensionals today, <laughs> but it will help it sit on the card nice. And this is another little trick I like when I'm adding layers to a card, is just to have it open, and that way it's not trying to unfold when you're trying to stick things on it. It stays nice and flat and still and doesn't open on you or move on you. There we go. Oh, I like that. Okay. Whoops. One there. One there. So I cut my finger, you might have noticed that I've got a little band-aid on my finger. <laughs> and that's why I wasn't on live last week, because I had to keep my finger straight. I sliced the top of my knuckle off. <laughs> Not off completely. Just created a nice little flap. There we go. Oh, those are cute little boy cards, aren't they? And look, they are just a little bit different because, you know, it's really hard to make cards identical. <laughs> so now we've just got to do the insides. And I actually, uh, this is the Thin Whisper White cardstock, and I cut it up at 14.5 by 10.1. 
and I cut up a whole pack at a time so that way I've got a little stack of them ready to go and I can I've used them on my card fronts today but usually I just use them for the inserts um, and it means that I can finish my cards right away because they're there they're ready to use it's all good to go um, and I might just I really want to use the eat all the cake but I feel like it's um might do the put out the tiny fire because there is a little candle stamp here so I'll use that <laughs> I want to use the cake but there's no cake on the card I suppose I can add one but down a bit further. I don't like using too many different stamp sets. <laughs> it's my thing. I've already got two stamp sets out, that's enough. I should be able to create the card. <laughs> so we'll use pineapple punch. And hang on, I'll get two of these out. Now I'm just going to do one candle for my brother and two candles for Ryan because he's turning two. So I don't want to put 38 candles on the card. <laughs> and I will use, oh I might as well put them in here hey. See as it fits. go back there. Time. Well, hang on. I'll have to stamp. I'll have to do that after I've stamped this. Otherwise, I won't know where to put them. So, I'll do this in yellow as well. No, I like it this way. I probably should have used my Stampin' Pierce mat. Oh no, that came out really well. Okay. It's a good idea to use your Stampin' Pierce mat for... Um, polymer stamps. because they don't have the foam on them, so uh, that just creates the foam for them so that then you get a nice even, uh, even stamp. But he seems to be doing okay without it. Let's put all these stamps away while I've got them out here. What are we going to do, blueberry bushel? I think that's really the only the only option, isn't it? Blueberry bushel to match the rest of the card. Okay. Here it is. dimensionals all over my stamp. Okay. 
time to put out this tiny fire put out this tiny fire while we sing you a song. <laughs> that was terrible. Luckily, that's the insert for my brother's card. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Long time no see, how are you doing? There we go. Look at that. Lovely little cards. And the, the fronts are the same, basically, so I'm just going to stick the inserts in. That one's for Ryan with his two candles. And then this one's for my brother with one candle. Now I'm going to have to make a card as well for my mother-in-law to give to each of these guys, so stay tuned for next week's project. <laughs> but at least that's one done. I won't bother stamping my the one for Ryan. But stamp on the back of Graham's. There we go. Be, make it easier for me to be able to tell them apart. How cute is that? I might have to get that um well it's fly fishing isn't it? I suppose it probably doesn't have any boat talk in it. I need to get one with boat talk in it for my brother. <laughs> but I'm really happy with how that's worked out. I love those little those little clouds. They're very cute. Very cute. Well, thank you very much everyone for joining me for my take 2 of my craft video. I appreciate you jumping back on. <laughs> Hopefully next week is easier because the kids are back in daycare next week so um hopefully we get to craft uninterrupted but i will blog these and put them up and the photos and stuff for you guys so um you can have a look at those and if you have any questions or queries please let me know you know i'm always happy to chat about products or techniques uh, if you're in australia you can shop with me it's uh, go to jessieholton.com and follow the link and you can use my January host code HKT9EE4P and of course we've got the new occasions catalog and the celebrations promotion is running at the moment as well so if you'd like a copy of those please let me know thanks Kelly thanks Kerry um, thanks for joining me guys and I will catch you again soon bye